Il faut que j'y voie un médecin. Il faut que j'y voie un médecin. I have a pain in my elbow. J'ai mal au cul. J'ai mal au cul. I have a pain in my nose. J'ai mal dans le nez. J'ai mal dans le nez. I am a pain in the neck. I am a pain in... What? what? <laughs> I know French is important for tomorrow's interview, but so is sleep, and it's after half past twelve. Minuit et demi. I am tired. Je suis fatigué. Let's go to sleep, please. Dormez, s'il vous plaît. No, it's very good, Inspector Clouseau. Now put out the light, pour l'amour de Dieu. Sir. Turn them on. And uh, talking of l'amour. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Vive l'amour. Yes, but it's after minuit. You should have thought of that earlier. Well, so I'm talking all this French that does it. After all, it is the language of love. It's also the official language of the common market, and there's little enough love lost there. <laughs> but, you know, if I get this job in Brussels, it's going to be très, très bon, you know. It comes avec un grand appartement, de flash cars, not, not to mention Boko, the much more lolly than that I'm making at ce moment ici. Je fais un pitance comparé to Kel, I'll get sure there. Je quitte vous non pas. <laughs> All I have to do is convince Dennis of my fluency. Bonjour, Sir Dennis. Comment c'est pas? Oh, not all. You are too, too kind. As a matter of fact, you know, I've always been bilingual. No, he tells me. <laughs> so, um, with his Brussels job going, I'm brushing it up a bit. Oh, no trouble to also, Dennis. Oh, it's a pleasure to uh, co comply with the company's wishes. In that case, shut up and go to sleep. Well? Terry, I am sick of sharing this bed with you and Sir Dennis Hodge. Every night you crawl into bed and you go on crawling. <laughs> I'm not crawling, I'm just rehearsing my conversation so that my response will be completely spontaneous. And suppose he says something unexpected? What, Sir Dennis? He's the most predictably boring man I know. His only topics of conversation are the sad decline of the English cricket, the appalling state of the British economy and the ruddy trade unions. And do you know anything about any of them? We don't have to. All you have to do is agree with everything he says and manage to stay awake. Well, if you don't go to sleep now, neither of us will manage to stay awake. Mm, you're quite right. Good night. Night. I wonder if he's a mason. <laughs> what? Sir Dennis. If he was, I could borrow Uncle Sid's old pin. You can't pretend to be a mason. It's dishonest. I could have been one if I wanted to. Just didn't like showing me bare knees off in public. <laughs> you have to roll your child's legs up and bare your left breast. <laughs> it's the only organisation that women are not too keen on joining. <laughs> Go to sleep. <sighs> Bonjour, Sir Dennis. <laughs> Et vous un maison? Quelle coincidence. Moi aussi. Oh. Well, where, where are you going? To dorme in an outre chambre. This bed ain't big enough for three of us. That's the front doorbell. Well, you better answer it. Well, you're the one that's up. <laughs> Supposing it's a burglar. Ooh, jolly polite burglar ringing the front door, huh? oh, In my tender age, they used to break in. Shall I, um, shall I fill a bag of swag on the way down? Well, just do be careful. All right, come in, come in. <coughs> Terry. Yes? Well, Perhaps you shouldn't open the door after all. Why not? Well, I can't remember if we renewed our television licence and they're doing spot checks in the area. It's half past twelve at midnight. Oh, blimey, it's the GPO, not the KGB. <laughs> uh, anyway, I renewed it last week, so go back to bed. Mm. Who is it? It's Alan. Who? Uncle Terry, it's me, Alan, your nephew. Oh, crumbs. Um, uh, hello, Alan. Are, are you well? <laughs> Mo mother and father well? Perfect. Good, good. We're just going to sleep, actually. Who are you talking to? The bad penny, Alan. Well, aren't you going to open the door to him? No. <laughs> Is that Auntie June? 
Hello, Auntie June. Hello, Alan. Jerry, you're being very unreasonable. After the mess he got us into in his last visit? I, I was in the pearly area and felt I couldn't leave without seeing you both. Right, OK, then. <laughs> You've had a good look at this, now pop off. What are you doing? Lad is thick of the water. If you open that door, you'll have a chance to prove it. Piffle! Piffle! Auntie June! Alan! <laughs> Come into the kitchen, dear. No, no, not the kitchen. Anywhere but the kitchen. What's wrong with the kitchen? Nothing, as long as Dungeon Gut doesn't get in there. <laughs> it's all right, Uncle Terry. You don't have to worry about me. I had a huge meal a couple of hours ago. Oh, in that case, in you go. Oh, thank you. Mind you, it was a Chinese meal, and you know what they say. A half an hour afterwards, you're hungry again. A bit, I'm a bit peckish, come to think of things, aren't I? Look, would you like me to fix you a snack or something? All I want you to do is sit and chat with me. Come on, Uncle Terry, sit down and have a natter. I didn't come round here to have you waiting on me hand and foot. No, if you insist. Besides, I know where everything is. I can help myself. <laughs> All his side of the family love their food. It's a northern trait. It certainly is. They ship more food in a year than the Manchester Ship Canal. <laughs> Actually, I did have another reason for coming round to see you. Here we go. I'm in the middle of a deal down here that can earn us all a fortune. How exciting. No, just a minute. When you, when you say us, which us had you in mind? This won't cost you a penny, Uncle Terry. It is not the pennies I worry about. I owe you both more than I can ever repay you. How do you know? You've never tried. <laughs> well, last time I stayed round here overnight, I got you into a bit of a slightly embarrassing situation. Slightly embarrassing? I was arrested for hijacking a lorry load of Christmas puddings. <laughs> uh, must have been a bit of an upset. You got any pickle? Pickle? <laughs> uh, yes, dear, in that cupboard on the top shelf. Uh, do you think he heard a word I said, or did his stomach rumbling noise drown it out? I heard Uncle Terry, but this deal I'm working on will make up for all of that. Well, what is it, dear? Have you ever seen it's a knockout on the telly? It's a knockout? Of course not. Oh, we have, Terry. You know we have. It's where teams from all over the country dress up in ridiculous clothes and take part in those hilarious competitions. I thought that was come dancing. <laughs> he knows what you're talking about, Alan. Well, I've done this deal with the BBC to buy up some of the old costumes and games and I'll make a fortune renting them out to holiday camps and resorts. You know the sort of thing I mean? You've got these six giant rabbits and a huge pile of carrots and the rabbits grab a carrot and run to the other side of the pitch with a, to a gigantic top hat. No, 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 they don't. Eh? They don't run, they bounce. <laughs> I mean, you don't even know your own game. I mean, I mean, they've got these carrots and these trampolines and they, they bounce from one to the other. You mean backwards and forwards? No, 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 no. You see, they've got these trampolines stretched across the pitch, you see, and the rabbits have to grab a carrot and they bounce, bounce, one, <laughs> two, three, to the, across the trampolines, you see, and, and the other side, all the time, they're chucking giant turnips at them, you see. Well, one bloke, he, he got a turnip right in the, in the chop. <laughs> and he, he, he couldn't get up. He couldn't stand up because he, <laughs> he was standing. He was standing on his own feet, you see, because they've got these big feet, you see. And the only way they can get about is, is by, you know, well, like that, you see, with these big feet flopping about. <laughs> I thought you never watched it. I may have glanced at it. <laughs> anyway, I've got a video cassette of the, of the show, the costume and the carrot. There's only one thing I need. Money. No, I've got plenty of that. In fact, I want to give you some. Well, and that's a £20 note. Is the ink dry? <laughs> All I need is somewhere to store the costumes for a couple of nights until I find a suitable warehouse. Oh, no. There's only six rabbit suits and two dozen giant carrots. You can get them into one of your spare bedrooms. Well, I suppose you'll be in the other spare bedroom. Eh, uh, thanks for the offer, Uncle what? Terry. <laughs> I've already got Diggs in town. You don't want to stay in Diggs, dear? Yes, I do. It's the Hilton. The Hilton? <laughs> You? I'm moving up in the world, you know. What are you doing there? Cleaning the windows? <laughs> Store them for a couple of nights. That's all I'm asking. I'm sorry. Forty quid, that. It is not the money. Oh, well. On the other hand... <laughs> ..will help pay your last visit here. We'll be happy to look after your rabbits, won't we, Terry? Yes, we will, seeing as now he's provided the lettuce. <laughs> now, first thing in the morning, you must hunt around and find somebody else to keep your giant rabbits. Any suggestions? Yes, of course. Where? How about Warren Street? <laughs> Bonjour, Sir Dennis. Comment ça va? Bonjour, Sir Dennis. Comment ça va? Bonjour, uh, Miss Fennell, n'est-ce pas? Yes. 
Um, je suis uh, Medford, um, assistant sales manager, UK division. I have an 11 o'clock appointment with Sir Dennis. Heaven help you. Pardon? You'd better take a seat, Mr. Medford. You're going to need all your strength for the interview. Oh, crumbs. Uh, uh, how, how is Sir Dennis this morning? In all the years I've worked for him, I've never known him to be more destructive, hurtful and abusive. Oh, well, much as I love being hurt and destroyed and abused by Sir Dennis, I think perhaps I'll come back another time when he's in his normal rotten mood. If he asks for you, Mr Medford, and you're not here, the possibility exists that he may respond in a negative fashion to your promotional viability. In other words? He'll have your guts for garters. <laughs> in, in, in that case, I'll wait. I think perhaps we'd better... Medford there? Yes, Sir Dennis. Send him in. Sir Dennis will see you now. Do you happen to know if he's a mason? Sorry. Oh, it's, it's not important. Bonjour, Sir Dennis. Comment ça va? Bon. 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 What are you trying to say? Upon my word, Sir Dennis, you are looking well. Sit down. Yes, sir. Sir, you want this job in Brussels, do you? Uh, yes, sir. What's the matter, Medford? Don't you like this country? <laughs> yes, sir. Then why are you so anxious to leave it? Well, uh... What? Uh, well, sir, as a matter of fact, I'm greatly saddened by the sorry decline in the English cricket. Are you, by Jove? Yes. That, coupled with the appalling state of the British economy. Quite. Mm, not to mention the ruddy trade union. Oh, bolty snackers! <laughs> well, this country is not what it was, is it, sir? By God, you're right, Bedford. Yeah. You've noticed it too, have you? Yes. <laughs> well, you do get a certain amount of insight when you're a mason, don't you? I'm not a mason. No, neither am I. But, <laughs> but, uh, but I hear you do. My, my, my uncle Sid was one. Yes. I've been uh, asking some of your colleagues for their opinions of you, mate. Well, I hope you don't mind. Uh, did you learn anything of note, sir? Yes. According to their replies, you work with a group of backstabbing swine. <laughs> oh, not, not exactly complimentary, then, sir. Ham-fisted. Four of them said that. Thick. That was another favourite. <laughs> In fact, if I was to believe all they've written about you, I wouldn't employ you to lick stamps in the mailing department. <laughs> Fortunately, eh? I do not have much faith in intelligent men. In that case, you couldn't trust me completely, sir. <laughs> when I was at school, Bayford, I was surrounded by boys who were far more intelligent than me. But I soon realised that I had something much more important than intelligence. What? Something that would stand me in good stead for the rest of my life. But what was that, sir? Filthy rich parents. <laughs> have you got any outside business interests? Oh, oh no, sir. Well, that's one thing I won't tolerate. Anyone with divided loyalties is out. Especially now that we're going to launch our fire extinguishers in Europe. Do you like Europe? Um, um, it's difficult to say, sir. No, it isn't. I don't like Europe. Nothing difficult in saying that. <laughs> French are shiftless, I tie spineless, and the Germans are a bunch of unimaginative thugs. In that case, why are we going there, sir? Because I hate the Japs even more. <laughs> uh, Japanese? Yes, I know it's wrong, Medford, but I can't stand the blighters. Do you realise that last year, 49% of the minor fires in this country were put out by Japanese fire extinguishers? They are spending more money on firefighting research than any other nation in the world, and do you know why? Is it because they live in paper houses, sir? <laughs> it's because they want world domination in firefighting appliances. And they're starting with Europe. Well, we are going to stop them. We are going to open an office in Brussels. And we are going to stop the flow of these cheap Japanese models with a wave of expensive British ones. We don't want to set the world on fire, Medford, but by God, we're determined to put it out. Well said, Sir Dennis. How's your frog? I don't keep a frog, sir. <laughs> the lingo. Who is coming on, sir? Uh, il faut que je vois un messin. Uh, je uh, fais un coup. <laughs> what are you saying? I, I must see a doctor. I have a pain in the elbow. That's funny. I get that. It's a sort of throbbing just there. Isn't it? No. 
No, I don't actually get it. That is, that, that is what the French mean, sir. Oh, if you... Well, I suppose it comes in handy if you run up against a frog, Doctor. Yeah. Well, I think the best thing you could do is to invite me to dinner sometime this week, because you'll have to do a lot of entertaining on behalf of the firm, and if your wife can't cook or you can't hold your liquor, better to find these things out in the privacy of your own home. Mm. How about tomorrow evening? Oh, tomorrow. Oh, that's splendid. I'll bring uh, Fennel along with me. <laughs> Save you lumbering me with a dinner partner who might uh, bore the pants off me. Eight o'clock, all right? Yeah, d does this mean that I have a chance, sir? Well, I'll be frank with you, Medford. Much to my surprise, you impress me. <laughs> you might be ham-fisted. You might be thick. <laughs> but what you said about cricket, the state of the economy and the, the ruddy trade unions, by God, that made a hell of a lot of sense. Thank you, sir. Do you know, that might have been me talking. No. <laughs> Mmm, something smells good. I hope you're not using any garlic or any filthy foreign spices. No, only salt. Mind you, this menu you've planned for Sir Dennis is making think I'm a very unimaginative cook. Leek soup, roast beef and Yorkshire pudding, spotted dick and custard. Ah, you'll love it. A traditional English menu for a traditional English bigot. Hope he doesn't choke on the French beans. Mm. Oh, if that's him, he's early. Oh. Hang on. Hang on. Jump the second. <laughs> Welcome. Uncle Terry, get out. I won't take up much of your time, honest. You won't take any of my time. Here is the door, use it. Not that door, Auntie Jude. Alan, what have you done to your hand? Oh, I was knocking Alan out of a one-armed bandit last night and it fought back. Oh, but man. more important than that, I met these businessmen at the hotel last night who are really interested in doing a deal with me. June, don't listen to him, he's leaving. But there could be thousands of pounds involved. I do not... How much? I thought you said thousands. I don't care... Uh, pounds? That's right, Uncle Terry. And if you help me out now, I could cut you into a slice of the profits. Oh, no, Alan. Terry's chairman absolutely forbids his employees to get involved in any outside business. But, June, Alan is family. His family, Alan is. We're already involved. We didn't let him turn our spare room into a giant hut for his rabbits. So you won't mind if I show these blokes the costumes? Only too glad to get rid of them. Come on, I'll give you a hand. Come on. Oh, no, Alan. No need, actually. They're outside in the taxi. Yeah. I just caught them in and we'll pop upstairs. You're, you're, you're not popping anywhere. My chairman is about to arrive. I can't have rival businessmen tramping all over the place. But we'll be in and out before you can say Bugs Bunny. <sighs> if you'd like to come this way, gentlemen. Uh, these are the gentlemen I was telling you about. Mr Mishida, Mr Natsumi, <laughs> Mr Yoshida and Mr Ho. My aunt and uncle. <laughs> if you'd like to come this way, gentlemen. Hang on. Hang on, Trader Horn. Tell me. T tell me, Alan. They're not... They're not Japanese. It's Japanese. 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 Oh, in that case, out, out, out. You're not prejudiced, I'm, are you? No, I'm not. It's my chairman, my boss. I mean, he hates them. Oh, how could he? They're charming. Well, well not these particular gentlemen. I mean, you know, Japanese in general. If he sees me entertaining this lot, I mean, I'll get the sack. Sack it. Sack it. Sack it. Sack it. Sack it. Put it no, 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 crikey, put it away. Terry, as they're here, you might as well let them nip upstairs. Oh, I do beg your pardon. When I said nip, I really didn't mean it. <laughs> oh, that's the boss. Oh, uh, quick, get in, in the kitchen, Mr Satsuma, Mr Mashing Mash 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 Mash. Tish, Tosh, get out, go out the back way. Get, get, get them to leave quietly. What, what is the Japanese for silence? Stum? No, no. no. Shush, 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 softly, softly, otherwise I, I get it in the necky. Chop, chop. How do I look? Panic stricken. That's what everybody does around Sir Dennis. Come on. Fine. To Dennis, welcome. Ah, uh, evening, Bedford. Uh, Mrs. Bedford. You, uh, you know Miss Fennel, don't you? How do you do? Ah! Now that's what I like to see. <laughs> Better than all these green girls and china ducks. Had that long? Yes, yes, we stuck it up there the moment we moved here, sir. This, uh, the living room is through there. Don't hesitate to ask if you need help in the kitchen, Mrs. Medford. Oh, it's quite all right, thank you. It's crowded enough in there as it is. Mm. After you, Sir Dennis. Oh, thank you. Where are you going? What do you mean, where am I going? <laughs> This is the living room, isn't it? Uh, yes, of course it is. What the hell are you talking about, then? Well, actually, I, I, I said, uh, um, when are you going, sir? Well, damn it, I've only just got here. Yeah. 
I realise that, sir. It's my fault, Sir Dennis. I asked Terry to ask you the minute you arrived, because, you see, we're not planning to meet for another half hour, but if you have to leave early, I could perhaps hurry things up. Uh, yes, yes, that's it. That's it, exactly. Anyone, anyone care for a twiglet? No, thank you. No, I'm not in any hurry. What about you, fellow? No, no, I'm just looking forward to a nice, relaxed evening. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're, they're stale, stale twiglets. I'll, I'll just go and, and get some fresh ones. Shan't be second. If there's one thing Terry can't stand, it's stale twiglets. Alan! <sighs> come up here. Hey! Can you come up a minute? No, I can't. Thanks, Uncle Terry. Hang on, just a second. Hang on. Uh, uh, my Uncle Terry's coming. He can explain everything much better than I can. I'm, I'm ter terribly sure, sorry to show my lack of hospitality, but I must ask you to leave this house immediately. They understand English, Uncle Terry, but you'll have to talk very slowly. Right. Get out! <laughs> well, tell them how the game works. First, they won't go until you do. Oh, you bloodsucker. You, oh, oh, first of all, first of all, you, you put on the costume, you see, and then, then you grab a carrot. This here carrot. Uh, 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 carrot. Uh, uh, yeah. And then you, then you bounce on, on a trampoline. Uh, trampoline? Uh, uh, three trampolines. And you bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Uh, bouncy, uh, bouncy. Uh, bouncy, uh, bouncy. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no, not that sort of bouncy, bouncy. No. <laughs> no, you're, you're pretending to be rabbits. I love big bouncy, uh, bouncy. Uh, bouncy, uh, bouncy, uh, bouncy. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, crikey. Oh. It'll be easy if you get into one of these suits, Uncle Terry. I'll hold it for you. Yes, I... I <laughs> What, what am I doing? Well, I get into the costume myself, but I've got a sprained wrist. It's your brain that's sprained. I'm not getting into that thing. Everything hinges on this, Uncle Terry. Remember, thousands of pounds. Sterling. Sterling, if this deal comes off, and all you've got to do for it is to get into the suit. Oh, how little you know me, Alan. My pride and integrity come first before money every time. I'm not putting this thing on. I should look absolutely ridiculous. That one's more my size. <laughs> get it off the hook, too sweet. You're sure I can't offer you something to drink, Miss Fennel? Oh, no, 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 really. I, I never touch the stuff. But I, I would like to just freshen up, if I may. Oh, yes, of course. It's the door on the right at the top of the stairs. Thank you. Here we are, Sir Dennis. Uh, there you go. Yes, I, I should have uh, warned you about Miss Fennel. She's a marvellous secretary, of course, but uh, she had a very bad drink problem a few years ago. Every afternoon, she'd be absolutely useless. You mean she was... Persistently, as a mute. <laughs> Where are you going? I've left the contracts in the kitchen. I shan't be a sec. You, you, you can't leave me alone. <laughs> you, you can't leave me alone looking like this. Don't get back inside or you'll be seen. Don't shout. Go on, then. Will you? What are you hanging about for? You are standing on my foot! I'm oh, sorry, sir. Now up it! Very funny. <laughs> very, very funny. God. Poor Miss Fennel. Mm. Yes, one minute she'd be brushing imaginary ants off her lap, and the next she'd lock herself in the loo, screaming that she'd seen piranhas in the wash basin. <laughs> Could I have another scotch, please? Yes, of course, Sir Dennis. Thank you. Yeah, she's as right as rain now, of course. But uh, just goes to show what excessive drinking can do for you. Make it a large one this time, will you? Yes, of course. My God, what's a woman up to now? Hank, you grab a cat and you've got on a trampoline. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. <laughs> into the top hat. And then, then, you, then, you, then, you, then you go and grab another cat. And up, bouncy, bouncy, bouncy into the top hat. And then you go and grab another cat. And you go, and you go. into the top hat. And then, then you go and get another carrot, and you go out. Uh, uh, so sorry. Having a little trouble finding the twiglets. Would you, uh, would you care for a carrot? I, I know I'm not seeing what I think I'm seeing, but nevertheless, if you'll excuse me. Oh, Miss Fennell. My own troubles back again. Only this time they're, they're giant rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> they look exactly like your husband. <laughs> Miss Fennel. 
well. Oh, that was neat whiskey. Oh, well, I always was a very tidy drinker. <laughs> I can't get out. I can't get hold of the zip. You see, I can't get hold of it. You... <laughs> Stop taking pictures and get me out of this. I can't undo the zip with me furry, furry hand. Look, you help me. I show you. Look, look, zip, zip. You, you get. You do zip for me. You do zip for me. Zip, uh, you zip, see zip. Zip. Ah, zip. Okay. Like good. Like good. Ah. Right. Fine. Ah, glad about yeah. through to you. Here's the zip behind. Get on. <laughs> it's at the top there for you. P -p -p give it a good strong pull down, down the, down the. Uh, down. What are you doing? <laughs> no, not you zip up. You zip me down. Uh, oh, Clarky. Uh, um, June, could you come up here for a moment? It's all right. I'll attend to this, Mrs. Bedford. I really think Sir Dennis, I ought to go. No, no, no. You stay here with Miss Fennel. And for God's sake, keep her away from the Scotch. Right, I'm coming up, Bedford. Oh, crumbs. Look, hush. Who, you, you, you hush. Civil play. Civil play. Medford? Medford, where the devil are you? Uh, I'm, I'm in here, Sir Dennis, in the, in the bathroom. Ah. Well, look here. Fennel's just had a dose of the screaming abgams. She says she's seen giant rabbits. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> yes, well, I can tell that you're otherwise engaged. <laughs> Continue this conversation downstairs, shall we? Oh, it's up to you, sir, Sir Dennis. I should, I should be out very shortly. Oh, oh dear. Hmm? Yes, well, uh, no hurry, Bedford. I don't like being rushed in there myself. Here I am, sir. Ah, now look here. <laughs> right, Mr. Start cutting this out myself. You're saying, sir? Don't worry, it doesn't matter. Oh, Sir Dennis, yes? I think Miss Fennel really feels she ought to go home. Oh, Lord, well, I suppose I'd better drive you. Oh, no, what a shame. Must you go? Well, I don't have I'll to. I'll get your coat, sir. <laughs> I, I do apologise for having ruined everyone's evening. There's no need to apologise. I, I, I don't know what came over me. <laughs> Medford, what nationality are these rabbits? <laughs> Medford? Uh, I can explain everything, sir. Don't you dare. These gentlemen are with me, and uh, I was showing them around London when uh, I injured my wrist, and I popped in here on my aunt and uncle to have it done up. And I'll get them out of your hair now, sir, and I apologise, especially to you, madam, for upsetting you. Oh, no, not at all. I, I'm just so glad that they're real rabbits. Well, not real rabbits, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> On your way. Get those fluffy tails upstairs and grab your things. Sayonara. Sayonara, Uncle Terry. And you. I hope, Miss Fennel, that this means you'll stay after all. Oh, yes, indeed. But uh, do you think I could ask for something to drink? Another whiskey? No, a cup of tea. Oh, yes, of course. Come in the kitchen. I don't know about you, Sir Dennis, but I think I could do with something stronger. Uh, just a minute, Bedford. I'm not satisfied. Really? Yeah. There's one point in your nephew's explanation that doesn't ring true. Just the one? If he's showing these chaps around London, why the devil are they dressed up as rabbits? Well, it's obvious, isn't it, sir? Is it? Yeah, they've just come from the bunny club. <laughs> yeah.